Okay, so welcome. Nice to see you. Good to see you. So um, you're from a company called Robinhood that everybody is talking about in the industry. Um, right, I'm, for better or worse. <laughs> yeah, no, it's very disruptive what you're doing. So maybe we just play this short video of what you're doing and then we'll talk about it. You can dim the stage lights. You ever think about trading stocks? I mean, you can now, of course. But there's always been a cost, usually up to 10 bucks for every single trade. That adds up. No way around it for people like you and me. Until now. Robinhood lets you trade stocks with zero commission. That's right, commission free. Let me show you how this works because you might not believe me. Couldn't be easier to make a trade using the Robinhood app. Three taps. I just bought some stock. Zero commission, not up to 10 bucks. How do they do this? Well, other brokers have brick and mortar stores. They spend millions on Super Bowl ads. Robinhood doesn't, and the savings are passed on to you. It's simple, it's fast, and it works. You'll get real-time market data streaming to your phone when you need to know what you need to know to make an informed trade decision. Even notifications when important stuff happens. So sign up and make your first trade. It's commission free. People like us can trade just like the big guys with Robinhood. Okay, so um, you've created an app. Yes. I've seen it, it works. You take your phone out and you buy a share of Apple by swiping your finger, where you swipe and you say how many shares you wanna buy, and it confirms it, and you pay zero commission on the trade. That's right. How is that possible, and how did you figure out how to do this? So, we built Robinhood with, with one goal, and that is to make buying and selling stocks as frictionless as possible. And a large part of that friction that today we feel exists is the seven to $10 per trade commissions. And a few things have basically allowed commissions to be brought down to zero. Um, one of the things is in the past 10 years, the rise of electronic trading and high frequency trading in particular led to a lot of innovation in the financial services industry. Uh, a lot of it's been sort of invisible to end consumers, but has led to the reduction of prices, tightening of spreads, and just overall increases in efficiency that have lowered the costs of a trade actually being processed and executed. So it's a fully electronic transaction. The costs are essentially zero. So the reason that brokerages charge commissions historically has been uh, sort of another reason. And that's because historically, it's taken a lot of investment up front to build the brand of a brokerage and to get the word out and to acquire customers. So brands have been built by brick and mortar stores, having you know, a, a big building with columns so that when you walk down the street, you can, you can see it and it's right there. And that's been how historically trust has been developed. And customers have been acquired through running expensive ads, uh, television, Google AdWords, and um, part of that has led to cost of acquisition being quite high. So a lot of brokerages are acquiring customers for over $1,000. So we're, we're sort of not, not doing any of those things. We're focusing on product first, and the way that sort of uh, social media has developed over the, the past 10 years if we, if we build a really, really beautiful, nice product that's simple and people enjoy, then we can sort of cheat and skip all of that stuff, building the brick and mortar stores and advertising budgets because we're really counting on our users to, to distribute our product and get the word out. And I think we've seen that with Robinhood. There's been over 150,000 people that have signed up so far in the two months since we've announced it. Most of that has just come from, you know, someone seeing their friend post about Robinhood on Facebook or on Twitter and going to the website and seeing this looks like a cool thing. You know, I want to, I want to try this out. I think that this could be a good product that, that could be exciting. So it makes no money through the actual trade. So then that leads any uh, consumer to think, how do these guys make money? And what is the answer to that question? Or is it, we'll figure it out later? 
So we do hear that question a lot. And I don't think, I don't think I've ever come up with, with actually a, a great answer. What I usually say is, you know, we make money through margin lending and payment for order flow and all these other ways that brokerages make money besides char charging commissions. But I think what's, what's really interesting here is that the question being asked itself sort of, sort of, sort of means that there's uh, an expectation and a supposition that brokerages exist for the purpose of making money. You know, you, you ask about a brokerage, why, why does this exist? It's, it's to make money. So the fact that the fact that we're a brokerage, you know, makes leads people to think that a service like Robinhood should exist to make money as well. But that's really not the case. The purpose of Robinhood is to make buying and selling stocks as frictionless as possible. So if we if we make money as as a side effect of that, you know, that's that's great, but it will never be at the cost of introducing frictions between our customers and the markets. If you get a large number of people addicted to doing this, you could be holding some amount of wealth as well uh, in your accounts. Would you be benefiting from that? There is value in the business from, from being the place where people hold, hold their assets. And that's one of the ways that brokerages make money right now. And there's obviously value going forward, you know, if Robinhood, when Robinhood becomes the place where, where people like to store their assets for, for transacting. The uh, entire day trading phenomenon went away um, after the dot-com bubble happened. People sort of just disengaged from that in a large way. Has, has it started to come back a little bit? Has Twitter or Facebook shares pulled civilians into the market again to have them trading stocks on a daily basis? Or do you think this is, and, and is that who you're going after, this sort of casual day trader? Or do you think this is something that, like, people who already trade are going to want to use? I think, I, think, I think there's both. So there has been sort of a resurgence of people interested in investing their money recently. I mean, the past uh, 2008 has been, had been really hard on the markets, and the markets have, have rallied since that time. So I think you're seeing an, an influx of, of retail investors, people looking for ways to, to invest their money other than just sticking in the savings account. Um, and people that have been really interested in Robinhood have been sort of combination of people that are trading right now, using, using existing services and paying seven to 10 bucks a trade. And you know, some of these people get in contact with us and are like, we're really excited for this to come out. I, last year I paid $4,000 in commissions. So I think, I think those people certainly like feel the value proposition of the product very, very directly. But another thing that's, that's really interesting and another type of user that, that we're seeing get really interested about the product is younger people. So people under the age of 34 that you know, maybe are either in college or have their first job out of school and haven't selected their brokerage yet. And I think for, for those people, A, Robinhood is sort of the first example of a product that happens to be a brokerage that they could really see themselves using and enjoying. It's mobile first, so it goes with you wherever you're going. Uh, it's built to the standards of like other consumer products that, that our generation is also, used to. Also, you could buy one share, I mean, and have it make sense. I mean, if you're paying a minimum of a five or an eight dollar commission and you're buying 10 shares of an eight dollar stock, I mean, you're giving 10 percent. Yeah. You're negative 10 percent when you buy the shares. That's absolutely true. Uh, some behaviors are just sort of intrinsically impossible with exist with the seven to ten dollar commissions charge. If you're buying, you know, a hundred, five hundred dollars worth of stock, even a thousand dollars worth of stock, you know, that commission eats up a, a significant percentage of that entire transaction. I think you can sort of think of it, think of it as, as, as shipping for, for products, mm. right? I mean, if you're, if you're buying a $50 physical good and there's a five to ten dollar shipping charge, that's a friction. You might not buy that good. The same holds true for financial products and instruments. Now, you've built this all on top of an API. That's correct. So at some point in the future, I'm going to be able to plug Robinhood into some product, anybody, to buy and sell shares inside of that product. Yeah, so, so one thing that we're very, very interested in is actually opening this up and creating a platform that sort of, uh, sort of allows other people to build on top of our core brokerage infrastructure. Um, 
it's, it's a little ways down the line still because right now we're just focused on core product, getting the yeah. app out. Um, but I think, I think when we release that API, it, it'll really, you'll see a lot more, a lot more stuff happening in the space than, than really has been before. What are some ideas that you guys think will emerge from the API? It's hard to say, you know, I, I think, um, I think you'll have a lot of a lot of people building tools, leveraging uh, portfolio, rebalancing, and things like that. Um, but I think the really interesting thing is when we when we open up the API, people will build things that, you know, people haven't been expecting or or anticipating, and um, that's one thing that that I'm really excited about seeing. Um, what do the folks on Wall Street and the brokerage houses think? about what you're doing, have they reached out, and what has the backlash or feedback been from sort of Wall Street? Are they calling saying, can we invest in the company and buy it and shut you down, or are they saying this is awesome, or what? I think it, it, sort, of, it sort of runs the, the entire spectrum. You know, a, a lot of our advisors and investors are from the financial industry. Um, you know, from, from the, the main brokerage houses, they're probably not paying, you know, a ton of attention to us yet. We haven't launched, so I'm not trying to put, you know, the, the cart before the horse. But, um, yeah, I think, I think one thing that's, that's really interesting is that Robinhood is also sort of fundamentally a different, a different company than, than a lot of these financial companies. I mean, we're, we're based in, in the valley right here. Uh, sort of finance epicenter is, as you know, in New York. So... We're not hiring traditional traders and brokerage people like a lot of these a lot of these firms. You know, we're hiring engineers. We have a team of eleven engineers from places like Google, Facebook, MIT, Stanford, Pixar. So we're just getting you know the brightest engineers and designers to to get together and, and work on this problem. And I don't think you'll see a team like that in um, in a traditional brokerage. We hear a lot about high frequency trading and sort of the cost of that, flash crashes, other weird behavior that people can't explain in the market. Taking out the cost associated with trading would lead one to believe that there'll be many more transactions. If there are many more transactions, what impact could that have on a market? You know, I'm not sure. Um, so certain things have been tried before. There have been promotions where companies have, have offered zero commission trading, and it's actually not led to you know, an, an increase in high frequency trading or day trading to a point where people think that it's affecting the markets. I think the reason is there's, there's a lot of regulations in place that actually prevent people from just like trading an intense amount. Like uh, there's rules preventing people from day trading um, or uh, having a certain amount of trading activity without putting money into a margin account. Um, we're responsible for making sure that people's activity is suitable. So I think the difference between, you know, allowing people more frictionless zero commission access to the markets on their phone and high frequency trading is, is, is very, very wide. Um, so I, it'll, it'll be interesting to see. I think there will be some different behaviors, but I don't think uh, rise in, in high-frequency trading is, is likely to be one of them. The name Robinhood leads one to believe that you guys have some sort of an ax to grind. What is that ax? Yeah, we've, we've heard that question a lot, and it's, it's not so much the stealing from the rich and giving to the poor that Robinhood stands for. Robinhood is really more about giving tools that have traditionally been available only to elites or institutional investors, uh, namely at first zero commission trading, typically been only available to people that are trading large amounts and have, have a large accounts and are very sophisticated, giving those tools to, to regular retail investors. So it's, 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 it's a little bit more abstract than just you know, taking money from the rich and giving it to the poor. That's not what Robinhood stands for. Robinhood is really more about just providing access to tools that have previously been reserved only for, for elites. Do you see um, moving down maybe into the private company market at some point? And, you know, you have second market and AngelList and just a big market in secondary shares for those things. Do you see a time when people might be able to trade a share of a private company? You know, oh, I want to trade Nightscope and 
you know, some of the other ones we saw today, Ohm Signal and whatnot, on a platform like yours? I think that's that's certainly interesting, and it's something we've got our eye on. And you know, it's it's one area where there have been regulations sort of introduced in the in the past couple of years that we're still sort of waiting to see how they how they play out. But certainly, we've got we've got our eye on that market as there's there's definitely a demand for that. You. Do you need to have a particularly large amount of experience in this space to actually get an app like this approved and to become a broker and be able to trade? I mean, what is the process like? I mean, it's one thing to build, and I think we saw Travis go through this as well. You know, you build an app like this, and then you start going into markets, and Seattle may or may not approve Uber's usage, or Vegas right. may not, or, I mean, how much work do you have to go through when you start dealing with trading stocks? How much regulation? It's it's a lot of work. So uh, Robinhood is a uh, member of FINRA and registered with the SEC, and that took a lot of time to, to actually procure. We were in the process of the membership process for uh, several months, almost a year, and we have um, compliance in-house that, that sort of makes sure that we're doing everything by the books. We have a, a relationship with the regulators that is very important to us. So it's, yeah, it's, it's not just like building another app and putting it on the app store and, and getting accounts. Like we, we very much are in a regulated industry. And it's been one of the challenges and also sort of one of the, one of the differentiators in the space. You know, if, if, you, if you have the ability to iterate quickly and, and, and build products, given the constraints of operating in a regulated regime, then I think that could be a really big differentiator for Robinhood going forward down the line. And um, I'm just curious from the audience, how many people here have traded a share of stock in the past year or two? Anybody? Really? Wow. So how many people, people would be interested in trying Robinhood? And f that was basically 90% of people want to try your product. It's pretty amazing. Um, it's kind of inspired people a whole bunch. What about putting together portfolios? I mean, portfolio theory is getting you know, kind of, there's all devices in the market for buying the NASDAQ or buying emerging markets. You can sort of buy a portfolio. Is there going to be a time where I can just swipe and say, I want to have this $1,000 be, you know, represent the Fortune 500 or, you know, this group of technology companies and one swipe sort of buy it? It's, it's, it's a very interesting product, and I think a lot of people are sort of like knocking on the doors of that. You have companies like Wealthfront, Wealthfront that are really yeah. tackling you know, the, the passive market. I think um, one thing that we decided very consciously when we, when we started building Robinhood that, is that we would start by, by targeting active investors, self-directed investors. And I think there's an opportunity, you know, obviously, once we, once we nail that to expand and offer different products and services. But I think one, one important thing that probably a bunch of you guys have heard a lot is that it's important to start with one thing and do it spectacularly well. Because if we go in there and we're like, oh, we want to do passive investment vehicles, you know, active traders, options, futures, international securities, we end up doing a whole bunch of things like really, really mediocre. So I think that's one of the reasons why we're starting with a very, very limited you know, use case, which is buying stocks on your iPhone, and then we want to make sure we just do that spectacularly well and then move on to, to other things. When will we be able to download it and use it, do you think? How so close are you? We know there's a ton of demand, so we're working nights, weekends, basically around the clock to get the product to a point where you know, people can use it and enjoy it. But one thing that's like super, super important for us is making sure that people's experiences is in, are good and yeah. everything is This secure. year, maybe? Yeah, it'll, it'll definitely be this year. So um, maybe over the summer or the fourth quarter or something? Yeah, we just have to be super confident that, you know, everything, that, that nothing can fail and people's experiences are good because you're dealing with real money. So we have basically like zero tolerance for any kind of, of failure. Uh, Vlad, it's a spectacular idea. I know a lot of people are really interested in and want to try it. So everybody check out Robinhood.com now. Dot com, yeah. You got so, the dot com. So we, we were originally dot io, but end, uh, ended up getting the, uh, the dot com recently. That sounds like a $100,000 domain. We, uh, we, were, we were fortunate to uh, talk to the previous owner. He ended up being a, a great guy. So. Oh, awesome. All right, well, let's hear it for Vlad and Robinhood.
And uh, next up, we have uh, Barracuda, one of our partners.